Hello, welcome to the Mark Jonad Show, the cybersecurity show. In this video, let's talk about Roblox and how you can exploit it on PCs. I'm gonna cover actually how to do so in this video. So without further ado, let's get right into it. We're going dark. So essentially, what is the purpose of Roblox, right? It's basically a site that allows users to imagine, socialize, chat, play, create, interact, and relate with others in many ways. The Roblox suite allows gamers to create their own game or create another world with friends or virtual explorers. That's that, okay? That's that, that's that's the little overview. Let's get into the fun stuff. What types of exploits are there, right? There's a lot of exploits that exist for Roblox. The most popular are script executors, uh, since they allow you to do almost anything you want without restrictions, right? That's that. <laughs> that's where they come from. Now, uh, there's three main types of ways that exploiters achieve script execution, but they're not too important to helping you develop countermeasures. Uh, second, uh, why doesn't Roblox do more to prevent exploiters? So, uh, it's a huge site. There's many things that go on it. So, why aren't there more security measures? So, after seeing their security measures, uh, you know, people want to know what they can do to implement, you know, to prevent exploiters. So, uh, one of the only reasons why so much exploits is happening is because of smart and dedicated people in the community who work together to bypass Roblox checks, such as the Luca, uh, Eternal, Defcon, etc. Now, Roblox doesn't do more to prevent exploiters simply because they can't without risk breaking a lot of games or it would require sketchy UAC privileges, which might make people think that Roblox is a virus. So the anti-exploit development mostly comes down to you as the developer. So you understand your game the best and therefore you can prevent exploits the best on your game. Please take a moment to hit the subscribe button and the like button. Please take a moment to hit the subscribe button and the like button. Click it, click it right now, it's free. It's free to do so, click that button. Uh, so. Let's clarify some things before we proceed, right? It's near impossible to detect and exploit by just injecting it. Roblox does do this, but it's actually not the hardest to get around. Some exploits are, however, detectable upon injection. Uh, and number two, Roblox actively tries to stop exploiters. That's why there's updates every single week to basically shuffle important info that you need to get an exploit working. Roblox can't just check if an exploits window is open. It does check for certain windows, but most exploits will just randomize their window name. You have to write your anti-exploit around detection, uh, detecting scripts, right? Please keep that in mind. You have to write your anti-exploit around detecting scripts instead of exploits themselves. Filtering enabled is not one fixes all solution. All this does is prevent exploiters from replicated stuff to the server without reverse engineering anything. So when it comes to asset and script stealing, uh, it's almost near impossible to prevent. Now remember, you're gonna wanna remember this. Anything that the client uses can be seen by exploiters. So do not be ignorant about what you let them see. And exploiters cannot see server script code. It's not replicated to them, so you can't hide a lot of check uh, inside of them. So uh, now let's get into different types of exploits. There are two main types of ways that exploiters can mess with your game. Firstly, the client script executors, and these are the most common. These are the ones that just run only on your client and have to find a way to actually exploit your game. Uh, some examples, uh, uh, you know, are the Synapse uh, X, the Sentinel, the Tempest, the JJ Sploit, and second is the Server Script Executors. These are often abbreviated as SS, short for Server Side. These ones are much more rare and typically only happen through developers, you know, ignorance, right? Uh, so if you take uh, a look at, you know, front page models in the catalog, you'll see uh, pages of full SSs or backdoors. And backdoors work by having a server script that listens to the client and typically will execute commands or are even full of scripts. Now, these are much more dangerous since they don't have any, any filtering and can easily get your game locked if you don't prevent them. And we saw this with the Meep City and the Tubers 93. And backdoors are usually hidden away far inside some scripts, so this is why you should check over every script uh, you know, a free model uses if you're using FMs. 
and explorers often try to conceal their back doors behind obfuscated code but uh it's never really been seen you know one that's actually been smart about it right so an easy way to tell if something is backdoored is if you see obfuscated code or just control f and search for require and it's hidden uh away so to prevent backdoor slash ss's uh is very simple be sure the free models you use are clean and plugins you install are from actually verified developers preventing uh client exploits is a bit more complicated but uh you know let's get into some of the explanations here is how to write your anti-exploit robox roblox puts most of the anti-script execution work on you this is because only you understand your game's work uh, you know workings best and therefore know what a player should and shouldn't be doing so you'll want to start by relying on the server almost entirely for your anti-exploit uh because there's been way too many people who just paste an anti rc7 uh, script into the client which an explorer could literally just delete and then be off the hook so however if they don't have a backdoor an explorer cannot delete a server cited anti-exploit so you should start by error logging uh and you know we'll use this to our advantage uh you know and we'll do this by uh you know we to you know we can detect a lot of you know poorly written scripts so uh you, we're gonna need to connect to an event to log whenever an error occurs uh we then can use the message and script parameters that it passes to determine if it's an exploit however we need to use this on the client because of roblox replication boundary so be sure to hide this code deep inside some large client scripts you use then you need to create a remote event in the replicated storage called um the console error so this will now log whenever some, somebody errors, right? To prevent false positive bans, you should send the errors to some server and manually review it to determine if they should be banned. So the script from parameter uses get full name because most scripts that exploits execute will be parented by the NIL. So you want to be look out for that. So uh, let's make a lot more scripts that explorers use error, right? So uh, this is simple but you you know should be done before you write anything else for your game as it could break your own scripts on accident so let's uh randomize the names of a lot of data model children that scripts use uh you know this will require some work uh to write your game scripts but it's worth it so you can put this script in either a server or client server it doesn't really matter but if you put it inside the client be sure to destroy the script after it runs uh, this will now randomize the names of commonly used services in exploit uh, however this could easily break your entire game if your scripts aren't correctly written and to fix this you can use the game uh, get service service name peter you could put that on the screen so the viewers can see instead of the game dot service uh name dot right so it's good practice uh, anyway right so if an explorer executes a script that uses the game dot service name it will error uh, and you can catch it much easier. But if they execute something, you know, like the game service, and Peter, you can put that on screen, the game service equals 100, uh, that is not good. And we shouldn't, you know, we shouldn't check the walk speed on the client because remember that an exploiter could just delete a client cited anti exploit. So uh, we should write a distance checker on the server every time interval, right? Uh, we check how far a player's moved. If they move further than they should have in a certain amount of time, they're probably using some sort of speed hack. This should lead as an example of what you should do to prevent exploits for your games. You know, we have examples like, you know, if you have a money remote, did the player award themselves an insane amount of money? So if you have a money remote, make sure that it will only affect the player who fired it and nobody else. If you have a cup slash item giver, make sure that a player can only give themselves uh, the item a certain amount of times per second. So uh, that's what I have for you today. Please take a moment to hit that subscribe button and the like button. Please, once again, please take a moment right now. Hit that subscribe button and the like button. Is there a better way to exploit Roblox? Please let me know in the comment section below. I appreciate your viewership. Stay safe. See you in the next video.